بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillah, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Blessings and salutations upon the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad ibn Abdillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We send blessings and salutations upon all the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless every single one of us and grant us goodness in this world and the next. My beloved brothers and sisters in this beautiful suburb of Bosmont, in the beautiful masjid, the Bosmont masjid, mashallah, and I see the faces breaking into a beautiful smile and that's what we are known for, mashallah. Even if we don't have teeth, those are the most genuine smiles we can ever have. So... Don't let there be a shortage of smiles, for indeed it helps one another. It breaks a lot of barriers. It creates ease even in the lives of those who are stressed. And remember, more than anything else, it is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, I'm sure when someone extremely important is visiting your home, or is visiting your suburb or your city, someone whom you are close to, whom you've been wanting to meet for a long time, you would be excited. And I'm sure you would make sure that you arrive early and you are dressed appropriately and that nowadays perhaps you have your camera ready and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Human beings that we have around us today are not as important as another gift that Allah has bestowed upon us, known as Iman. If I were to ask you what is the biggest gift that you and I have, your answer would be wrong if it was anything besides Iman and the following of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The fact that I am a member of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the greatest gift that I have. That is what makes me a mu'min. That's why I am called a person with Iman, someone who has belief. Because to be honest, if I didn't have that belief, no matter what I had in terms of materialistic items of this world, they are valueless. They mean nothing. They might help me for a few days. And thereafter, when I die, there is no more that I will benefit from that particular wealth. But when I believe, even the money that I have, I will know how to spend it, how to earn it to begin with. When you're a believer, you know that quantity doesn't matter. It is actually the quality. It's the way you look at things. We as believers know that sometimes the wealthiest of the lot suffer insomnia. They cannot sleep. They cannot do certain things sometimes that the poor people can do. You have some people who are in their beddings under a tree. And subhanallah, they have deeper sleep than those who sleep on beddings that cost 20,000 rands. Water floats. I don't even know if you know what that is. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't, because guess what? I don't myself. So my brothers and sisters, the point being raised here is when you're a believer, you are content. You are happy with what Allah has given you. You make the most of it. You thank Allah. If you were to complain and if that was going to solve your problems, trust me, the first hadith would have been learn to complain. But complaining does nothing for you. It will never do anything for you. If you really have to complain, guess how it should be? You should complain about your own weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the complaint. Is there any other complaint we have? The answer is no. We complain about our own weakness. The rest of it, we make dua to Allah. We supplicate to Allah. The problems we have, the challenges we face, the health matters that we might be going through in terms of problems, difficulties, issues, and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. So, one of these gifts is a guest that we're about to welcome. 
that guest is not in the form of a person. Remember this. People say, MashaAllah, you're going to spend the whole month of Ramadan with us in Bosmont. How did it happen? Alhamdulillah, it happened by the grace of Allah. The honor is mine. Indeed, I'm looking forward to the month. Indeed, I'm looking forward to benefit from you more than anything else. But that having been said, the biggest guest we have is the month of Ramadan itself. In a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has termed this beautiful month as Sayyidu Shuhur. Did you know that? Sayyidu Shuhur. What would that mean? The master of all the months. Top of the months. There are two months that are at the top. You have Ramadan and then you have Dhul Hijjah. And thereafter you have some of the days of Muharram. I'm sure you would know that not all the days are equal in the Islamic calendar. Just like not all the places are equal for a Muslim. You go to Mecca, it is far more virtuous, far more spiritual, far more elevated than any other place anywhere else on earth. You go to Medina Munawwara, the same applies. It's different in value. When you are in Bosmont, for example, you are at your home, the value is different. When you come to the house of Allah, guess whose house you just entered? Mine? Yours? No, the house of Allah, your maker. Here it's different. You will feel good. You will feel nice. And it's your duty to make others feel nice. This is why we say, my brothers and sisters, when you want to welcome a human being who's coming into your home and he's a very important person, you won't be seen with a pipe in your hand. You won't be seen with a pipe in your hand put to your mouth. Nor will you be seen with a big cigar. Nor will you be seen with a cigarette and so on. You are welcoming someone for a short period of time. You will make sure you are smelling good. You are looking good. Your bad habits are set aside. You don't want the person to know about them. Brothers and sisters, seize the opportunity of welcoming this beautiful month of Ramadan by cutting your bad ways and habits now. If we don't promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what are, what are we waiting for? Allah says, I'm going to take your life away very soon. But before I do that, I'm going to give you a few chances to turn back. Let's see if you turn back. People look for jobs. We search and hunt for a job. We sometimes get a job and we feel, you know what, the salary is not good enough. So we were looking for another job and we keep on looking for a job. And we know how it feels when there is a big job and someone else gets it. And we feel to ourselves, okay, Alhamdulillah, as a mu'min, I know it wasn't my sustenance. But Ya Allah, open my door in some way. It would have been good if I got that job, right? My brothers and sisters, more important than a job that is going to bring you a few dollars or pounds or rands is... A tijarah that Allah speaks about, a business that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about. And what is it? It is that business that will save you from the fire of Jahannam. Wallahi, one of the deals is to be able to turn to Allah pre-Ramadan in such a way that you welcome the month of Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to speak about Ramadan in the month of Sha'ban, the month we are in right now. He used to prepare his companions to say, we are definitely expecting a beautiful guest. Start preparing. It's going to be different. It's going to be something different from all the other 11 months of the year. This is a beautiful year. Brothers and sisters, open your heart, open your soul, improve your character. I was saying, you come into the masjid, you make sure you are smelling good, looking good. But at the same time, make sure that you make others feel good as well. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. How are you doing? And you sit down. Don't make someone feel such that they don't want to come back to the masjid. How does that happen? One is offensive smell. I'm smelling of cigarettes so badly that the brother next to me couldn't even stand. So what you do? And I'm talking of the few who smoke. Very few, I think, smoke. Maybe five or ten from amongst you. <laughs> so those five or ten, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen you. We all have bad habits, and I'm sure you know it's a bad habit, but wouldn't you like to, visit, wouldn't you like to welcome the month of Ramadan in a state that you've quit that bad habit? What happened? I quit it. For what? For the sake of Allah, He gave me an opportunity. I found a job. What's the job? Wow. My boss tells me, you come to work, no smoking. Allahu Akbar. If your boss told you, I pay you 200,000 rands a month, 
and you come to work, the condition is no smoking. You will tell the boss, if I met you one year ago, I would have stopped smoking then too. Right? So Allah is our boss. What we are getting is far more valuable than 200,000 rands a month. We are getting millions, billions, priceless. Allah says, no bad habits. No, no, no. So let's give it up. I'm trying to word it in a beautiful way so that you can actually feel like giving it up. I don't want to bombard and I don't want to doom. But I would like to let you know that it is a bad habit. We all know it is. Give it up. You're welcoming Ramadan. Ramadan is more important than the president. Ramadan is more important than anything else that you have. Ramadan is your iman that is being given an opportunity to blossom and to grow. How can you have it? One hand, you have the cigarette and the other hand, you're entering the masjid. What you do, those who do have the bad habit and who are struggling to give it up, at least pause. Pause. You know, I was asked a question a few years back. Something very, very serious. Please forgive me to make mention of it here. But the five, six who smoke will understand what I'm saying. A person asks, I get so angry towards the end of the day. Am I allowed, allowed to open my fast? Not with a date or zamzam, but with a cigarette. May Allah forgive us. If that is the question, I don't even want to go to where the answer is going to be. Because... لِلسَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ The hadith says a person who fasts has two points of absolute joy. The one is when they're opening the fast. That is divided into two. You open it every day. Absolute joy. Why? The angels are about to write down one fast. This person has fasted for the sake of Allah. This person is expecting a reward. This person this, this person that. And next thing you open, instead of saying, you know, Allahumma laka sumtu and so on, we are saying, oh Allah, I thank you for giving me a cigarette. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> you opening your fast. It's going to be written next to your name. Don't do that. I know people might be saying, this man is not a smoker. He doesn't know what it's all about. The reality is I'm encouraging you very strongly to use the opportunity to quit your habit. Wallahi. At least when you kiss your wife, she will thank people like us. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Sorry for saying that, but it's, it's serious. A lot of women complain, you know, my husband's a smoker. I don't know what it feels like to kiss one who doesn't smoke. May Allah forgive us. So you can say, yes, my love. After Ramadan, you will know by the will of Allah. Because guess what? During Ramadan, I'm quitting this bad habit then it won't be like kissing a chimney. So my brothers and sisters, a reality is welcome the month by cutting your bad ways and habits. I was saying a foul smell when you come into the masjid is something terrible, terrible. So at least quit it before. Wash your mouth thoroughly, put a little bit of perfume, mashallah, and don't put that perfume that gives a headache. Do you know? Anything cheaper than five rands, please don't use that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Because you intend goodness. But you know what will happen? You're standing here, the next man's getting a headache. And the other person's really suffering, struggling. They're almost fainting because of the strong smell of something that's really, you know, to kill maybe another odor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us wisdom. Use a little bit of perfume. You don't have to overdo it. A little bit, mashallah. So, after that, you enter the masjid. When you see people break into a smile, let's make that the stamp of Bosmont by the will of Allah. The stamp of our masjid here will be when we see each other, we break into a smile. That's it. Just break into a lovely smile. Assalamu alaikum. That's it. You know, sometimes what happens is we start becoming so friendly that we ask questions that chase people away from the masjid. Brother, mashallah, how are you? I'm fine. How's your children? Fine. How's your wife? Fine. Okay. Uh, okay. So what business are you in? Fine. He'll tell you. Okay. So, oh, mashallah, you're a carpenter. You know, I need to do some cupboards back at home. Will you give me some discount, brother? Now, is that what you're supposed to be asking at the masjid? Is that what the house of Allah is all about? The brother might say, hey, look, brother, you know what? Now he doesn't know how to answer because you know what? Everyone's finding it difficult to make ends meet. Do you agree? Everyone has his or her own difficulties and issues. So mashallah, you say, oh mashallah, that's good brother and so on. One day you ask him for a quote. Maybe you might want to politely say, brother, is there any discount you might offer here? In a polite way. But you don't have to become such that you put pressure on him. Every day you say, remember my discount? Remember my discount? He's not going to come back to the masjid, I promise you. He won't come. So when you come into the house of Allah, do you know why? You, your behavior must be upon its best because you get a reward for everyone who feels comfortable in the house of Allah because of you. Allahu Akbar. 
When you park your car, and we'll have to tell this to so many people so many times, I can let you in on something serious. You see, when I was in London, and this happened in a lot of places, but lately in London, we had a talk at one of the masjids. The name of the masjid was Ramadan, Masjid Ramadan, by the way. So someone had parked his car in an awkward way, and there was an emergency. And the people came to me with a number plate. And they put the number plate forth. And now it's difficult because if the brother's sitting in the middle here, I'm going to call out a plate. And I'm going to say, so and so with it, this number plate, please get up and move your car. He's so embarrassed because if he gets up, the whole masjid looks at him. And everyone's like, ah, you know, what did you do here? You know, so he'd rather just sit and pretend like nothing happened. So I had to say, brother, brothers and sisters, we're about to make a beautiful dua for someone. This is the number plate. If this is your number plate, please stand up. We make a lovely dua for you. May Allah bless you. May Allah grant you wealth. May Allah grant you health. May Allah open your doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your children, give you this, give you that. You know what? The brother was gone. <laughs> MashaAllah, already. You. Because he wanted all those duas. But then I had to make an announcement. I said, this is not going to happen all the time. Don't park your car awkward because you want the number plate to become famous in the front of the masjid here. We're going to be beaming across the globe by the will of Allah. It will be across so many television stations, radio stations, internet, uh, you know, links and so on, audio streaming, video streaming. So let's not be an embarrassment by the will of Allah. It's not going to add value to your vehicle. The fact that the number plate was announced and the make was announced in the masjid. You know my car, I want to sell it. So in the paper you say, 2010, this car was announced at the masjid you want, you can go to this video, you can check it this on this minute, this second, you'll see that was the car. So it's added 20,000 rands to the value of the car. That's not going to happen. The point I'm raising more seriously is please let's park our vehicles in such a way that we don't disturb people. Someone might want to go away early for some reason, some doctors on call, some other people on call and so on. They want to disappear. Some people have a health matter. They want to go away. Some people for no reason, for example, they have something they want to attend to that's private. They want to go. We should not be an obstacle by the will of Allah. So that's important. Next time people will come and say, you know what? You go to that masjid, everything is in order by the will of Allah. And this is why we like to say, try and have like a lift club. Lift club meaning if you're coming from one area, let four or five people sit together and come. You save petrol, you, you, you actually come together, you can talk together, mashallah, discuss what's going to happen, discuss what happened when you're going back and alhamdulillah you achieve a reward. So inshallah, we will make this month a month with a difference. Let's welcome it in a beautiful way. Like I said, we enter the masjid, inshallah, when we see each other, break into a smile. Assalamu alaikum, bare minimum. Another thing you need to know, many of us have a habit of hugging, hugging one another. It's okay, we're just testing the sound and we're trying to synchronize it today, inshallah. So many of us have a habit of hugging one another, subhanallah. It's a good habit. It's not a bad habit. But you need to know if the place and the time is correct. Why? Sometimes at the door, everybody's hugging. Others want to go out. And sometimes... We're blocking the way. Sometimes people might be sick and ill. And then, oh, we are sick and ill. I'm, I have such a cough that I know that, you know what? It's not healthy for me to go and hug someone. But we, ah, 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 and, we, and we want to hug someone. They will feel uneasy. Next time they see you, they're going to run to the other corner. So the best thing is to say, you know what? I'm not feeling too well. But Alhamdulillah, mashallah, I won't hug you. And this is how it is. Today, I used an excuse. I said, you see, this scarf takes me so long to iron. To be honest, you can see it, can't you? Right? <laughs> now, if you were to give me a hug, it's going to get creased. Imagine what will happen. If you, especially the tight hugs. So now, the best thing is just shake the hand. But the reality is, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, many people say, we want to shake the hand of the imam. I think it's important. I really think it's important in the sense that it gives you a bond. It makes you feel connected to someone who perhaps might teach you a thing or two and so on. But when the masjid is packed, when there are so many people, be realistic. Realistic meaning, you know, something more important than any imam that's living today is the Hajar Aswad in Makkah. Do you agree? What does Allah say about that? You kiss it. You must kiss it and you must make sajda on it. Which means you put your forehead on it. So I kiss it as I'm saying, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. May Allah take us all to Makkah. Amen. May Allah take us all for Hajj and Umrah. Amen. It's a habit of mine just to seize the opportunity to make a dua. You never know the angels are saying Amen and we are there. Kabul, mashallah. So 
That Hajar Aswad is far more important than anyone here. Do you agree? There Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you kiss it if you can. If you what? If you can. But you don't stampede and you don't create havoc and you don't hurt a fellow believer because it is much more important to safeguard the dignity and the health and the you know, the security of the fellow Muslims than to kiss a stone when Allah has shown you another way of doing things. If you really can't make it to go there and to kiss it and to put your head on it, then at least you can take a stick or you can take some form of a rod and you can touch it and then kiss the end that has actually touched that Hajar Aswad. Did you know that that's part of the Sunnah? The Prophet ﷺ on one occasion, he was on his camel and when he got to the place where the Hajar is, he would actually take the stick, he would touch the, the hajar, and he would kiss the end of the stick. It's another way of doing things. However, they probably won't allow you nowadays with so many sticks going into the haram. You know, imagine 100,000 people going in with sticks. They will wonder, when the salah starts, where are you going to put it? We have a problem as it is with shoes. I wonder what would happen with the sticks. We would have to have computerized sticks because you're not going to recognize your stick. But at the same time, there's another way of doing things. From a distance, you can actually do it with your hands. We know that. From a distance, we do it with your hands. So what would happen is, if you are greeting someone, and you know the, that the opportunity is not correct for it, because maybe there is a large crowd, maybe there are so many people, maybe it's not, right, it's not the right time, maybe the person you are trying to greet is in a little bit of a rush, it can happen. So in that particular case, you either shake their hand and carry on, rather than offer this hug that we're talking about, or you make a dua for them. That's far more important than anything else. You make a dua for them. My brothers and sisters, I would love it if you made a dua for me, and you would love it if I made a dua for you. Imagine if someone says, all those who couldn't shake my hand, may Allah bless them, grant them good health, may Allah. Oh, people would say, well, then I'm not shaking your hand anymore, because that's when I'm getting all the duas. But we don't want to do that, we don't want to say that. We want to make dua for one another. It's the month of dua as well. That doesn't mean wait for it to make all your du'a. Start from now. We're welcoming the month. Start now. Soften your heart from now. You know, when you want to sow the seeds, if you have a farm and you want to plant vegetation, you want to plow, how does it start? You need to clear the land before the season. You don't just see the first rains and suddenly say, hey, you know what? Now we're going to clear. No. In advance, before the first rains, they'll tell you 15 November, you're going to have these rains. 15 October, you'll have one little shower. It's like Allah's gift. So you have that shower. I'm talking of this part of the world. And immediately, you know there's a signal here. You start flattening the ground, straightening it, smoothening it, perhaps clearing it as you can. And then you take your, your tractors and whatnot and you start, you start uh, you know, plowing after you softened it and made it prepared, ready. You put the seed when it's the right time to put it in and then you will start watering and so on. You cannot start last minute. The same applies to the month of Ramadan. It's a month of growth. It's a month of spirituality. Iman will blossom. Like I said before, your link with Allah has to become strong. It cannot be that a mu'min witnesses the month of Ramadan and their link with Allah becomes weak. It cannot be. It has to become strong, my brothers and sisters. And this is why we say, before Ramadan, start clearing the way, pave the way. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, I've committed sins. I know what I've done. Oh Allah, whatever sins I've committed, I've quit them. For your sake, help me to enter the month of Ramadan in such a beautiful way that you are pleased with me. Oh Allah, let there be at least one month of Ramadan in my life where I have done something correct. Beautiful opportunities. They don't come by all the time. So start now. This is why I've chosen today, following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to speak about how to welcome this month. Few points. And these points are just mild. They're not even anything heavy. Start becoming regular with your salah from now. Some people say, okay, I'm going to get up for fajr, but only in Ramadan. That's a lie. You're getting up for the food. It's the suhoor that you're getting up for. And by the way, you're awake. So now you're just making the fajr. The winner is the one who says, no way. I'm getting up from, for fajr from today. May Allah forgive us for what's happened in the past. Remember, you must do your qada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I was teasing one of the brothers, asking us, so what raka'at are we doing? I said, we are doing 40. 40 raka'at this year in Bosmont. 
And he just looked at me. He knew, obviously, we were, t- we were just telling him a lie, you know. So Imam Malik was with. And he says, we're doing qada for last year, and we're reading for those who won't come next year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. What we should do is, let's read correctly. Let's read beautifully. Let's start from now. Dedicate your five salah a day. From now, see how your life will change. We have a few days. I want to also make mention of a beautiful sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu as we welcome Ramadan. We have in this country a gift of Allah, whereby we can see the moon with our eyes. There are some countries where they cannot do that because of their weather conditions. Always, you know, overcast and sometimes snow and sometimes anything else, they cannot see the moon. We are fortunate we can. So I want to teach you something very, very great. It's important for us to know the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad is to search for the moon, to search for it. When? The 29th of the lunar month. The 29th. Remember to revive the sunnah. We love Muhammad He taught us to go out and do something known as the harri. Try hard to see the moon. It's a sunnah. Imagine I just have to look and I'm achieving a reward. I just have to look. I got to search. And I'm achieving a reward. Do you know why I'm saying this? Many of us say, yeah, well, we do. No, we don't. A lot of us, when we know that the hours after the birth of the moon are too little for the moon to be sighted by the naked eye, we cut out the sunnah. We know it's the 29th. But we say, nah, it's not really going to be visible. Just leave it, you know, just leave it. That's wrong. Even if the moon born, not born, one hour, five hours, ten hours, just fulfill the sunnah. Fulfill the sunnah of searching. It's the 29th. I tell you why we need to revive the sunnah. Do not ever be the cause of the killing of a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't. Revive it. Go and search for it. You will be surprised. I want to teach you something else. If Allah wants, He can show you that moon. We believe in the power of Allah. We believe in miracles. We all believe in miracles. If He wants, He can show the whole community something. And the rest of the world will learn a lesson from it. It has happened in communities and societies. It has. There was a time when people said, this moon is 11 hours. There's no chance that anyone's going to see it. And I remember I said, look, let's say that from a scientific perspective, The chances are almost nil. Where did properly? But don't say there's no chance because that moon doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Allah. When Muhammad says, search for it, just search for it. That's all. That's it. And don't be like the old man at the time of Umar ibn Khattab when they were all searching for the moon and only one man says, hey, I see the moon. So Umar ibn Khattab looks at him and smiles and he says, wipe your eyes. So he wiped his eyes. He says, right now, look again. Do you see it? He says, no, I don't. <laughs> so he says a beautiful word in the Arabic language. <laughs> One of the gray hairs from your eyebrows was probably coming down. It looked like a moon in front of your eye. So now that you wiped your eye, it's not there anymore. But doesn't that show us that it's a sunnah to search for the moon? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I'm definitely looking forward to this beautiful month of Ramadan. May Allah grant us life to see that. May Allah forgive us if we die before that. May Allah grant us Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to help one another. Really and surely, I already feel at home and I'm looking forward to spend the entire month. It will be 30 minutes on the dot every single night by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And already I've spoken right now for 28 minutes and 42 seconds. So... Because we started a minute or two late, I will end here saying, my brothers and sisters, take the month seriously. Let's learn to love one another. Let's learn to forgive one another. Seek forgiveness and forgive. Ask people forgiveness and forgive. When you say, I'm sorry, it's not necessary that you mean I'm totally wrong. All it means is, you know what? The person is more important to me than being right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Brothers and sisters, keep the du'as rolling, one after the other, from now. Just keep them rolling while you're driving, while you're talking, walking, add in the du'as. Like how you like spice in your food, you need to add all the du'as because that is cholesterol free. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all.